Hey everybody. Let me make sure I have this angle here fixed completely. How is everybody doing? I think like that should work. Hey everybody! It's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. Thanks for tuning in today to join me for this live chat that we're doing. Kind of like a quilt along for my latest tutorial that went live on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's for a fractured block and we'll get into that in a minute. Let me shut this off. So I have my design wall here and I just wanted to talk a little bit about color, color value, and show you some of the blocks that I've already completed and see what we can get as we turn some of these square blocks and see, I think it's always helpful to see it from further back so you can get, you know, multiple different design layouts with your quilt blocks. Now, if you're wondering where I am, this is my new sewing studio in the new house. It's not fully set up yet. If you watched the last tutorial, you kind of saw a sneak peek of all this stuff up here. I have some of my plants and little fun gifts and things that I've received. I set up a table here with my iron in case I need to press some of my blocks. And then the design wall is just a piece of cotton batting. It's pretty thin. And I just use like 3M command strips to hold it up on the wall. Obviously, this is my brand new sewing studio, so I don't want to start poking holes in the walls. And I don't yet know exactly where the final location of the design wall will be. So this is kind of temporary, okay? If anybody has any questions for me, would you like to say hello, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> My husband's helping me here, handling the chat. If you have any questions, go ahead and chat and he will try to answer them for you. Before I get out of here. Um, he will try to answer them for you. Uh, a few things to get out of the way. One is we are using my 10 inch slicer ruler. And this is a ruler I designed about five or six years ago. It's designed to be used with 10 inch squares. Cool news is that if you have Am or you use Amazon or you have Amazon Prime, you can now get my five inch and 10 inch slicers off Amazon. So if you just do a search on Amazon for Crafty Gemini, 10 inch slicer, make sure you type in Crafty Gemini. Otherwise, if you type in like 10 inch slicer, because it's fairly new to Amazon, you're probably gonna get a link to a, like a meat slicing machine, a 10 inch slicer. So go ahead and, and make sure that you do a search for Crafty Gemini and you'll find them on there. So if that's um, easier for you to order via Amazon, you can find both of them there. Hi, Carla. Hi, Tamara. Oh, I see a lot of friends here. Hi, Monique. Hey, Gloria. How's everybody doing? Hey, Audrey from Canada. Ooh, a lot of very familiar names and thumbnails. All right, so that's the ruler that we're working with. Uh, also, before I get started on here, just a quick note that uh, I get a lot of times emails and comments from people asking about sewing machines. Let me see if you can see it. There's a box down here um, with my newest sewing machine that I have not yet had a chance to set up because we're still kind of moving into the new house. Uh, and you all know probably by now that I buy all my machines from um, so many things in Mount Dora, Florida. You know, I'm obsessed with my Juki machines. So this is another Juki. But uh, the guys over at So Many Things made a coupon code that they recently told me about. So if you're subscribed to my email newsletter, you probably got that email earlier this afternoon. If you are not subscribed to my email newsletter, head on over to CraftyGemini.com. And right there on the homepage, you'll see a tab for email sign up. Sign up for my email newsletter, it's free. That is where you're gonna find out the most latest information from tutorials to sales to coupon codes to events and all that kind of stuff. And so I wanted to let you all know because for my Crafty Gemini fans, they are offering $200 off specific sewing machine and serger models. Uh, I sent that out in the email, so if you are on my email newsletter, just make sure that you go back in your email box. If you think you're subscribed and maybe you haven't seen it, Check your spam or junk folder. It sometimes ends up there and you'll see all the details there. Once this live is over, I'll go ahead and update the description box of this video. We just didn't have time to do everything right now between cows, kids, garden, cooking dinner, all that stuff. We're a little behind tonight, so it was rushing right there to the seven o'clock uh, hour, okay? So after the live is over, I'll go ahead and include all the links, but Mr. Wilson, are you including links for them there too if they ask for it? Uh, yes, ma'am, I put the Amazon link. Oh, great. So he's already putting the Amazon links for you. So just scroll through the chat box if you are live with us right now. And if you're watching this after, I believe the chat is still saved. So you may still be able to scroll through and look at those links that he's posting there. But I will put them kind of stationary so they live in the description box of this video later on tonight. Okay. So the coupon code for so many things. First of all, a couple of requirements. You have to buy from them online on their website. It's so many, like M-I-N-I things.com slash shop. Pretty simple. 
And uh, if you enter the coupon code CRAFTY200, so CRAFTY200 will save you $200 off on select sewing machines that are in there. And in the email I sent out, I put a couple different models. If you see a model on there that you're interested in, like the DX5 or the DX7, I've done video reviews on the DX5, on the Juki 2010Q, on the Juki M01000 Serger, like a ton of these machines. And if you've been eyeballing one of those, I think $200 off is a lot of money. So uh, it definitely is in your best interest to at least check it out, especially if you're in the market for a new machine or serger. Uh, they have awesome customer service. If you don't know so many things, that's why I get all my machines from. And they provide, they were the ones that provided the 60 sewing machines that we use recently on my quilting cruise. So if you recall that, the room full of all the sewing machines, they provided those machines uh, for everybody to use on the cruise that whole week. So that was super, super awesome. They're great. Um, so it's like the DX5, the DX7, the NX7, the MO1000, um, a couple of other different models, the MO735, which is another serger. There's a few different models there that you can use that code on, which is fabulous. Uh, so again, the code is crafty200 and it's by shopping at so many things.com slash shop. So just check it out there. And I was going to say, if you see a machine that's not on there that you're interested in, go ahead and give the call, um, Go, go ahead and give the shop a call. Although they are close to the public, they're still answering phone calls, emails, and that way you can inquire to see when they're gonna get more in stock of that model. But $200 is a chunk, a chunk. So I think it's worth it to kind of dig in, you know, call them and work with them to see if you can get that and obviously apply the coupon code, okay? So that's kind of like the sale announcement of the day. Moving on to my design wall and my blocks. The most recent tutorial that I have posted on my YouTube channel, and I hope the sound is really good because I bought a new microphone that's a clip-on mic. So this, even though I'm like legit 10 or 11 feet away from the camera, I hope that you all can hear me great. So give me a thumbs up in the comments below. Go ahead and give the video too a thumbs up if you can hear me good and you like what you see. <clears throat> well, excuse me, I do have my water here. And we are going to be doing some giveaways tonight. Those of you that catch my flash sale Fridays on my Facebook page, we do have the wheel here, so stay tuned for that. Do you have any questions coming from me? I'm just going to give these blocks a quick press, and then let's start talking about how to place them up for a design layout. Uh, one question about the sewing machine sale. Is the cover stitch machine one of the ones that they could use the... Oh, is the Juki cover stitch machine one of the ones? I don't think so, but again, because they kind of sent me a, a list of the different models, if you call the shop, just ask, say, hey, I was watching Vanessa live. She was saying we get, you know, her fans get $200 off using this code and, and just say, hey, I was wondering if the cover stitch machine is one that I could apply it on, you know, and then talk to them and see if that code doesn't apply to that one, they might be able to do something else for you. Okay. But it always helps to call. They have great, fabulous customer service. A lot of you that have come to my retreats in the past or have been members of my online clubs have purchased machines from them. Over the years, I have a great relationship with them. They're fabulous, and we've been working together for what? Five years now, at least? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Five About five years, so. All right, so I'm giving these blocks a little press. If you wanna learn how to make a little mini DIY ironing board, I also have a tutorial for that on my YouTube channel. Just type in Crafty Gemini mini ironing board, uh, and it will pop up for you. Okay, <clears throat> so let me come up close. Here is the fractured block. Okay, it features two background chunks and then this kind of offset piece of a um, whatever we want to call it, like a contrasting fabric. So I usually when I have a kind of a simple block, but usually when it has like a geometric shape. And I feel a loose hair or an ant or something on me. The joys of being in the garden 15 minutes before you go live on the air. <laughs> oh, Y'all have no idea. My life is nuts. Okay. So I usually like to go with lights and darks and I feel like you get more pop visual interest. So in this case, our background pieces are the light, which is obviously this white fabric. Look how cute. It has some gray in it, really pretty, low volume. And then the accent chunk here, this fractured piece is the dark, right? And it's not that this is necessarily a, a really dark fabric, but I, when I say lights and darks, I mean when they're next to each other, right? One fabric should play as my light, at least how I like to do it. And then the other fabric should play as my dark. So if you can quickly and easily look at the two fabrics side by side, where they're going to be sewn, whether here or here, right? 
and tell yourself instantly, which is the light? This one, right? Which is the dark? This one. Then I know that these are going to create enough visual interest and contrast for me that I'm going to like the way it looks and it's going to pop in my fit overall design. Now, the step-by-step the -step video tutorial for this is already on my YouTube channel. Um, we did talk about trimming them down to a proper square. So I can put this in my quilt design layout like this, like this, like this, like this. So you can already imagine if I have say 24, 48 identical blocks, how many different ways we can manipulate these side by side for the design layout. So let's play around a little bit. And I will tell you, I'm using, um, or I use a 10 inch square pack here, but I'm not done with all the blocks. So it may look like I'm a little bit limited as far as my options go, but I will be making more blocks and I'll be sure to check in with you all after. Now, if you're watching the recording here, don't worry. You can use the links in the description box below, check out the tutorial, learn more about my 10 inch slicer. And this is just one of the ways that you can use this ruler. So you can pre-cut your fabric into 10 inch by 10 inch square pieces. And you can also just buy like those 10 inch square packs. Okay. So let's see, let's just put this one here. Can you see my feet? I'm barefoot. Just pretend. Okay, good. <laughs> so this next one, see what I'm talking about the lights and darks? Neither one of these fabrics is particularly light, but next to each other, okay, this plays as my light and this as my dark because this is darker than this to me, okay? And I'll talk a little bit about the ruby ruler because I know in the last live chat, a lot of you were asking about it. I did remember to bring one from the shop this time. So... Actually, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit because I think maybe this will be easier for you all to see and easier for me since I don't have to keep lifting up my arms. So see, these two blocks, if you notice, are identical, but they're mirror imaged. So if you watch the fractured block tutorial, you'll see that I show you how to make it two ways. If we cut into the fabrics with my 10 inch slicer with the square pieces of fabric, pretty side facing up, you're gonna get the block facing one way. But if you do the exact same cut and you cut into the fabric square pretty side face down, meaning you're looking at the wrong side of the fabric when you cut, you end up with the exact same block with the mirror image. So now we've created kind of a whole nother level of complexity and secondary design layouts that we can work with. So let me scoot this out. I'm gonna start putting some of these up here because I did not do a good job of separating them into, which is what I tell you in the tutorial, separate them out. You know, the ones that are one way and the ones that are mirror image. Okay, great. So here. So here's this. So these two are mirror image. And if I place them like background edge together, the chunks, the fractured pieces are going away from the whole thing. Okay. Whereas these two mirror image blocks, if I place them with the fractured piece facing in, they meet up right here. Because we use the template and we repeat the same identical steps each time to each square of fabric, you end up with identical blocks that you know are going to match up, especially when you trim them using the tips that I share with you in the video. So this is another option. And if you look at all the blocks I created, I always do a light and a dark or dark and a light. Okay. It doesn't matter which one is which. I just want one to be of each. So let me show you one that I really like the way that it looked when I match them up and you can turn them any which way. Remember I said these are, uh, they are nine and a half inch square. So they all match up. Do we have a question? Oh yeah, we've got a couple actually. Okay. Um, the first question is, can you do this with the five inch slicer? So then that the, the question is, can you do this with the five inch slicer? You can, but it's going to be on such a smaller scale that I would play around with the placement and how you cut it. You might end up with such a small fractured piece like this section here that it may not even be worth it. So a lot of times people think that because they're using five inch squares instead of 10 inch, that it's going to be half the size. But really, if you look at a 10 inch square, okay, a five inch square is one fourth of this. So split here, split here, you get a five inch square, a five inch square, a five inch square, and a five inch square. So it's significantly smaller when you're making these types of cuts, okay? So if you're new to using the five inch slicer, definitely watch the video tutorials that I've already included in the archive library for the five inch slicers. And I think this is a good time to know that when you buy my rulers, whether the five inch or the 10 inch slicer, you don't have to buy patterns in order to use my rulers, right? So once you own the rulers, you get access to the link, which is available to anybody. So if you're thinking about buying one, you can just go to the links, scroll through and see if this is something, hey, I like this block, this block, this block. Okay, I can make these different blocks with this ruler. Then you can decide if you wanna buy it or not. 
Um, so the links, I will just tell you, and we'll put them in the chat box too. Brandon? Yeah. Okay. So it's craftygemini.com slash 10 inch spelled out I-N-C-H slicer. And on that page, I put all the tutorials that you, or the tutorials that I've done so far. And there's actually been a couple other ones that some bloggers and YouTubers have made using my ruler and I embed them in there too, to give you more options. Okay. And then craftygemini.com slash five inch slicer. Scroll through and look at the different products. And I will say they're not all quilt blocks. You all know me. I don't like things that just are like one purpose. So of course it's not going to be just to make one block. It's also not just going to be for quilt blocks. I teach you how to make these really cute zippered pouches using the templates also. One for the five inch and one for the 10 inch. Okay. So good question. Uh, can we get one more question? Yes. One more question. Go for um, it. Is the design wall made from poly cotton or cotton batting? So I have used this type of a design wall. It's just a chunk of batting that I unrolled from a roll and just stuck it up there. I've done it with polyester batting. I've done it with a poly cotton bat batting. This is a thin 100% cotton batting. Anything that's going to have a little bit of fuzz on the back that allows the friction like between the... I find that cotton and cotton sticks the best, but I have done it with polyester. But with the polyester batting, I find that I just have to kind of like smooth every single bit down. Whereas with the cotton, if I put it on... This can be kind of loose, but the little bit that's touching here holds, okay? That makes sense. But I know some people use, what is it that they always say they use? Um, Felt-backed tablecloths or something? Um, I, I've seen a lot of people over the years list about that, you know, that they kind of flip it to the felt side backing. And just because it has like that little bit of fuzz, the cotton fabric really adheres nicely to it. And it's great because you're not like having to spray anything or pin anything, you know, you just stick it smooth it, it stays, you pick it up, you move it, you know, and it's, it's really my favorite type of way to do it, especially if you have a space that you can put up your own chunk of batting up on. It's great for that. All right. I'm trying to find a piece that has this corner done so I can show you. Do as I say and not as I do y'all separate your blocks. All right. This one goes here. So say you worked with fabrics and you sorted out your fabric blocks into darks and lights. And you cut up your squares in a way that the fractured chunks were all going to be lights or were all going to be darks. Can you see how cool this funky design is where it meets in the center? I think that's probably one of the ways that I'm gonna put this quilt together once I'm done completing all my blocks because I really like that, the way that that looks. These four, where they hit right in the middle. And I think you can see that pretty well on camera even though these are all like, because you see what happens in this case, they're not all the same fabric and they're not all the same shade or color, but in comparison to their backgrounds, these inner fractured pieces are all light. You see how this is the dark and this is the light? Let's have a look at this one. This is the dark, this is the light. Here also, this is the dark and this pale pink is the light. And here too, this darker coral color is the dark and this pale gray is the light. So by playing around with the color value, both in the background pieces and in the fractured chunk, you can do something like this, where it draws your eye to the middle, where it's lighter in contrast to the darker background pieces. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do with this. Let's play around with another, another way to do it. Look what happens here. It's like a different design that's starting to be built because I put the background piece next to a, a block that has the fractured piece touching. So you see, I mean, you could spend hours, literally, just playing around with these pieces <laughs> on a design wall, standing back, looking at them, seeing how you wanna orient them. I mean, there's so many random different ways. And so I think it's a great scrap buster, especially these days. This is kind of why I'm working on this quote because I, I don't wanna think too much and I just wanna do something mindless, but still something that I enjoy. You see how it creates that where you bump them up? It's super funky. It's just different. You know, you can play around. If you have a ton of fabric in your stash, just cut up a bunch of fat quarters into 10 inch squares or yardage into 10 inch squares and just start cutting into them. You'd end up with an amazing, like just super scrappy quilt if you did something like that. Do we have another question? Um, what is the uh, coupon code? For, for so many things, the coupon code for the sewing machine sale is crafty 200. So just the word crafty lowercase, I don't know if it's case sensitive or not, but they send it to me lowercase crafty and the number 200. And that gets you $200 off select sewing machines and sergers on the so many things.com website. Okay. 
Yes, another question. What is the size of the four blocks together? Is it 20 and a half by 20 and a half? All right, so let's give it a measure because they're not sewn together yet. Um, and I noticed from some, uh, some ladies were writing me, let me grab a longer one. Some ladies wrote me to say that they made some of the blocks already for this quilt and they didn't measure like two. She said she made four blocks. Two of them measured nine and a half by nine and a half, like she was able to trim it up good. And the other two were a little bit shorter. She was wondering what happened. So if this happens to you and you know you're very accurate and precise with your cutting and your piecing, here's the deal. I have yet to work with a 10 inch square pack that measures exactly 10 inches square. Sometimes you pull them out, go ahead and measure your stack. If you're buying a pre-cut pack, go ahead and measure them. Some will measure 10. I've had some that measure 10 and an eight, 10 and a quarter, nine and three quarters. Like there's, you, you gotta give a little room for variance there. Um, so, you know, you're just gonna wanna trim all your blocks down to whatever the size of your smallest finished block is. So if that's nine and three eighths or nine and a quarter, go ahead and do that or nine, and, or nine inches square, whatever you need to do to trim them up, you can do that. I tend to wanna leave as much fabric as I can in there because I don't like to waste. Um, so let's see. So this is 19 inches, but that does not include the seam allowance. So 19 inches, we're gonna eat up a quarter inch here, whether it's by a border, your binding, or another block we sew it up to. So I'm gonna eat up another quarter inch here, another quarter inch here from this side of this block, then a quarter inch from this one, and a quarter inch from here. So I'm eating up, after these are sewn together, both here and to whatever's gonna go next to them, you're gotta subtract half an inch Per block makes sense quarter and a quarter is half an inch going to get deducted from this block same thing for here so if this measures 19 and they're side by side they're going to end up at about 18 inches by 18 inches make sense okay for four of them so let's let me play around with this a little bit more and this is like in real time like exactly how i would do it i like my stuff to kind of be sprinkled all around i don't really like too much symmetry but Let's see what I end up with. If I, play around with these guys a little bit more. Let me know if there's any questions. I'm just gonna sit here and play with pretty fabrics. Even if you do this and you don't get to sew. Oh, okay, I do have another question. You have another question go for um, Are the fabrics available for purchase, any of them? So these fabrics, I have had in my stash forever and a day, and I got these off of um, myblueprint.com. They usually have some good sales because they have their own brand of fabric. Um, and so when they put on their sales, and I think they are, what day is it today? The third? Today is the third. So they are closed down because I think their warehouse is in like Indiana or Illinois, something that has like a statewide shutdown. So I think it says on their website that they're going to start shipping again, maybe this coming week. So I would just check their website and see what kind of sales they have going on. Um, a lot of different places sell, just do a search for like 10 inch squares. Um, Moda Fabrics calls them layer cakes. Uh, some other companies call them tiles. So because everybody kind of has their trademark name for what they call 10 inch squares, I would just do a search for 10 inch squares and that way you can kind of open the world up to all the different uh, quality, you know, designer quality fabric brands. But I don't have pre-cuts that we carry at this time. So I don't have any to sell, unfortunately. I know that's the worst part about you share something and somebody likes that exact fabric and you're like, I don't have it, sorry. Aren't these cute though? Super cute. My cousin is getting ready to have another baby and I owe her a quilt for the second kid. She's already on her third, so I might <laughs> make one of these for them. Yeah, one more quick question. Another question, go for it. Yeah, man, which way do you press your seams? Oh, that's a good question. So a lot of different schools of thought on this, right? I am one that takes the quickest route. <laughs> Whichever way the fabric wants to go, I tend to press that way. So on, um, let me think how I showed it in the video. So when I do the first seam, okay, and I connect the two um, smaller chunks, I tend to press towards the darker fabric just because it's natural. Like I have it right there. There's only two pieces connected and I just swipe to the darker fabric. However, when I go back and attach the bigger chunk here, okay, and attach this one to here, then really this is split. So the darker fabric is only half of this one side. So what I do is I just press towards the bigger piece 
And that kind of allows this intersection of the seams in this part here to kind of lay a little bit flatter. Okay? Lie a little bit flatter. My apologies. All right. <clears throat> Let me find another one that goes good here. Gosh, this swapping game, you gotta keep. Nope, nope. <laughs> Has anybody picked out fabrics yet for this? Am I doing it right? One, two, that one there. Let me sort these out a little bit, just so I know what I have to work with. And I don't keep picking up the exact same one. These guys are all the same. This one. Cute. So see how I'm lining them up so those four ones meet there? And let me make another one here so I can put these guys four here. And I need to definitely make more blocks. And that's the cool part, that you can just make a ton of different blocks. See how that one, I like that. You know what these would make that would look really good is like large throw pillows. So we said they would finish up at 18 inches by 18 inches. These would probably work, I mean, you can make your own pillow. Uh, form so that you could use up the most of the fabric but if we trim them down we could probably make a good size like a 16 inch throw pillow with these as the front I think this would look amazing with some hand quilting how fun would that be super cute all right are we ready for a giveaway yes, you want to do a giveaway yes ma'am let me grab the spinning magic wheel and can you answer one question yeah yeah one question two, two. I'm sorry, the first question is, do you have the pattern for the black and white blocks behind and above you? Did you design that? Oh, oh, oh. good eyes, eagle eyes. So that block uses the 10 inch slicer, but my friend Laura made that, and it actually uses four blocks, um, that she then converted into a paper piece pattern. And we had like a mini quilt swap at our, a mini quilt swap at our local quilt guild. And I ended up, it was like everybody make a mini quilt, super fun. So if you have friends, when we all get out of this self-quarantine thing, you all should do something like this, where you like, everybody makes a mini quilt. And we're in a modern quilt guild, so everybody just makes some type of a modern quilt. And then we all bring them to the meeting and we lay them on the table. We label them one, two, three, four, through however many came. And then we crumble up the little papers in a bowl. And the number that you pick is the mini quilt that you get to take home. So I got lucky enough twice that we did these swaps to win Laura's. And if you all know Laura Douglas from Dragonfly Quilt Works, she is an impeccable seamstress. And she's very, very meticulous. So every point here is like spot on. This is another one that I got from her from the same swap that I pulled her thing again. Um, they're hexes that are done by hand English paper piecing. So really, really cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I should do something like that. I'm going to ask her if she has a pattern for it or what. But she used a tender slicer, made something like that, and then converted it into a paper, uh, foundation paper piece pattern. Because you can see the slice is like the sliced block, just cut the other way. So this is the most basic way that you can make, or that you can use my tender slicer ruler to make this slice block. And again, this is another tutorial that I have that you can learn how to make features again, 10 inch by 10 inch squares. And you can see that it's this, but then it's sliced this way and swapped. So it all plays with color, uh, with contrast there with blacks and whites. All right. All right. All right. So give away. Um, yep. Did we have another question or that one? Um, yeah. One more question. Go for but it. I want you to spin the wheel though. So, <laughs> so, um, Let's spin, spin, spin. spin. So um, we're spinning for Tamara. Tamara Carlin, we are spinning for you, girl. Let's see what you got. A fat quarter bundle. Do I have it here? Oh my gosh, Tamara, girl, you're going to be sewing for days. Uh, I don't know where it is, but I will find it and we will mail it off to you. It's a brand new fat quarter bundle that I um, pulled from the shop. So that's going to be awesome. Congratulations, Tammy. Um, make sure that you email us at bea at craftygemini.com with your name, mailing address, and just say, hey, it's Tamara. I won the giveaway prize for a fat quarter bundle. Let me see if it's here. I think I have it with a bunch of other fabrics. I don't see the bundle here, Tamara, but you want a whole fat quarter bundle. Girl, you're going to be making all the bags and all the quilts. That's awesome. 
So congratulations. If you are new to our channel and you're not familiar with our live chats or our wheel spinning thing here, we're just picking a random name from the comment section. So the more you participate, the more you chat, the more you thumbs up, the more you see your stuff come up, you know, you have obviously a better chance of getting your name called so that you too can win something from our giveaway wheel. Another question? Oh, uh, yeah. Go for it. Is Allie missing school? Is Allie missing school? So my daughter is Allie. We homeschool our kids, but recently in February, she started school. So she went to school for a whole, what, three weeks? Four weeks. So she went to school for about four weeks and then school got shut down. So my husband went this week and picked up like her binder, like all this stuff that the teachers have put together for the kids to do. So she was doing her work. And I asked her yesterday if she missed school and she said no, but she was like, I kind of like both. So we'll see if school starts back up in the fall. I doubt they're going to go back to school this year now, but we shall see because she's kind of back to her homeschool. My son's like, this is the same life I've always had. I've been homeschooled my whole life. So for him, he's living large and loving it, especially since we're in the new house. Okay, so this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And I'll take this time to mention, I know a lot of you, if you're watching me on YouTube, sometimes I find that people watch me on YouTube and then they don't know that I'm in other, on other places online. So if you are on Instagram or on Facebook, I'm really active on both of those platforms too. So, uh, that would be great. You know, if you can check out my stuff on Instagram or Facebook, you can always find me under the handle crafty Gemini on Instagram. I'm probably the most active cause I'm steady posting video clips on my Insta stories throughout the day. And then on Facebook too, I post a bunch of stuff. All right. So don't forget, I'm not just on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook also under crafty Gemini. All right. I kind of like those two. What do you think B? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> you better say you like it. <laughs> All right, let's see. And so this is something that I do. I'll place them like this just based off of the direction, right? The orientation of the block. Then I'll kind of take a step back and here I have a design wall. If you don't have a design wall, another quick tip is to, you can set it down on the floor, maybe in your bedroom and just stand up on your bed with your phone and snap a picture from a little bit of a ways away. It tends to make it easier to have stuff stand out. Like up here, because I'm so close to everything, I might not notice that I have like two gray blocks right next to each other. But when I pull away, and this is why I have a design wall like this, so I can kind of stand back and say, oh yeah, you see, these two are the opposite block. I don't know that I like these two right here, but I'll leave it there for now until I get more of the layout kind of built up and then go from there. But these are such cute colors. Shout out to Blueprint. This super old 10 inch slicer pack that I bought, or 10 inch slicer. 10 inch square pack that I bought years ago. Hmm. This is kind of cute. Mm, I don't know that I like those two, but we'll see. Can you all see that? Yeah, good. See like this and this. Imagine if you kind of like that shape, but you wanted it to be bolder. Say you're making a quilt with only two colors. If you cut your own 10 inch squares, okay, out of say two prints, say you bought two or three yards or something. I don't know exactly because I haven't worked out the math on yardage of making a big quilt like this. But say you had some yardage and you cut up a bunch of 10 inch squares of these two fabrics, a gray and a navy. You can cut them, right, opposite like this and make it so that the whole background is navy, navy, navy all the way around and the four fractured chunks of gray pop and meet in the middle. That would make a super, super bold quilt. I don't know, yeah, I don't have, let me see. I don't have any other ones that have the background of the navy again, but do you see what I mean? Where like where the navy meets, that it creates this kind of border to that funky geometric shape. This is the opposite of it. I don't have a dark one like that. But you get the idea. I don't really like these here because I don't have that type of quilt design set up here. So do we have any other questions? Any questions for 10 inch slicer or any piecing questions for me? Um, oh, let me see. I got one question about how do you get the squares to stick to the fabric? So it just sticks. If you are just joining us, we talked about this at the beginning. Like, I, <laughs> it's crazy because it looks like magic. And every time I do a video for a quilt along and I put up blocks, people are like, what are you using? For 
It's a piece of batting. That's it. I've done it with cotton, cotton poly, polyester. This one is cotton. This is a super thin batting, so it doesn't have to be anything super thick. And I mean, like, this is just the fabric block. And there it is. Like, it does nothing. Just cotton to cotton or cotton to poly. Something to the fuzz. It just holds. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it really does look like magic. And I feel like the way that I just pick them and move them, people are like, what are you using on there? Nothing. And how many blocks are you making? So that's a good question. Uh, it depends on the stack that you use, right? If you're using a pre-cut stack of 10 inch squares, some of them have 40, some have 42, I think. Some are like mini ones and they only have 24. So it just depends. If you're buying a pack that's done, make sure that you re-flip it over usually or on the front on the label, it'll tell you how many squares are coming into it. If you're cutting your own yardage, you can do whatever you want. I don't yet know because I still have a bunch of blocks left in this stack. And I haven't made them into blocks yet. So it's for sure going to be bigger than this. But something to keep in mind. See how this is the opposite of this? I don't really like these two right by, side by side. I'd rather have it kind of more sprinkled around. But what was I going to say? <laughs> something to, oh, something to keep in mind. That if you are going to play with the layout and say do something like this, like my, like how I'm thinking I might do it, I might not end up doing this because of what I'm about to tell you. These are four blocks put together. And if you want the design to be repeated across, you're either going to have to do two chunks like this or another two, right? Because I don't want to have like one thing of four, one thing of four, and then one thing of two. So you have to do the math and figure out, you know, am I going to have enough or is my quilt, can I make the quilt the size that I want by having three repeats of this four block um, unit together, okay? Or not. And if you find that maybe you don't have enough blocks or you want a smaller quilt, then maybe scratch this idea of having them all meet in the center and just play around with the with the blocks a different way, okay? I was like about to be like, let me take my phone and take a picture, but I'm talking on my phone. Can you, um, do you have your phone? No, you don't have your phone. The kids are on your phone. Okay. Um, because I want to move it, but I kind of want to save this layout. I'll go back and watch the video, that's what I'll do, and I'll take a screenshot of this right now. All right, <clears throat> so let's play around with this and get rid of this four thing in case you don't like that. Let's see what else we can do. If we put all the blocks, the ones that were cut with the pretty side facing up, all the identical blocks, right? Remember, I cut some face up, some face down, so I do for sure have mirror image blocks that may not work if I just want to have them all be facing one way. See how this is way too much gray? I don't like that. So let me move this. And this is the part that takes the longest. Making the blocks is going to be super quick for you. Oh, too much aqua, but we'll see. Sometimes if I find that like, okay, I don't like this, this is like the same fabric so much in such a small space, don't swap it out yet. Just leave it, put up more blocks, and then it's easier to kind of stand back and swap one at a time and then say, okay, now this one and now this one. And that's kind of how I do it um, in real time, really. People always wonder like, how do quilters do this and that? It's like, it takes forever to pick your fabric. <laughs> and then if it's an easy pattern, it goes super quick. But then it's like forever with the design layout, especially if you have something like this type of a, of a block that just, you know, you could do whatever you want with it. Let me sort these guys out. See, because I cut my blocks half and half, I don't have that many in this orientation to play with. So I have half and half. Let's see. Do you have another question for me while I sort? Okay. Why don't you rotate the bottom block 90, 90 degrees in alternate directions? Um, you can. I mean, you can rotate them any which way you want to. But it just depends on the direction that the fractured piece is. See, if you do something like that, you almost get like a pinwheel with the fractured chunks. So that's what we're talking about is just playing around. 
Can you kind of see that? It would show up better if you had them all like all light backgrounds and then the darker fractured pieces or all uh, the other way, dark background and fractured pieces. One more question. One more question. Go for it. Do you pre-wash the fabric? So no, great question. When you're working with pre-cut fabrics, the manufacturer will tell you do not pre-wash the fabrics, okay? Um, so you know that you don't have to. If you're someone who loves to pre-wash and pre-shrink your fabrics, one way that you can do it, and if you're going to, I would suggest you do this before you start cutting into the fabric, is to steam press it, right? So whether you use an iron that has steam in it or another tip that I like to use is either starch or just a water spray bottle. So instead of adding water, we have really hard water out here, we're on a well, uh, so I don't like to use my home water in the iron. So instead, I use a spray bottle with water and I just spritz the fabric, really light, light mist, and then I just set the, the iron to a dry heat setting and then I dry it. What that's gonna do is kind of like the cheater's way of pre-shrinking because you're adding moisture and heat and that's gonna go and shrink it up. What you don't wanna do is do any type of starching or water spraying and then heating it after the fact because if you cut your pieces out and then you decide, well, let me give them a press, they're gonna shrink down from the size that they were initially, okay? So what I do with pre-cuts is I, if, if it's a brand new stack, I usually don't even have to press it. If it's thrown in a bin somewhere in my stash, then I probably do. So what I do is I just give it a little press, even just with a dry iron, because I don't really want to be distorting it until I'm pressing the whole quilt top after it's been sewn. So that's what I do, is I just hit it with a dry iron really quickly, you know, get rid of any little creases. I cut, and then I'm pressing again with a dry iron as I'm pressing those seams, whether to the dark, if you are someone who likes to press your seams open, on a project like this, it wouldn't take that long because you only have two seams per block. So you could do that. My tip for pressing uh, seams open is always to shorten your stitch length a little bit. So if you sew, usually like at a 2.5 millimeter length, shrink it down a little bit, okay? 2.0, maybe two millimeter, you know, 2.2, just shrink it down a little bit and then press your seams open if you wanna do that. But I don't find a need to press my seams open here. Like I said, there's only two seams per block. There's no like seven different chunks meeting in a center to create a lot of bulk. So it works fine. And the whole idea of these projects with the ruler, right, is that they're quickie, quick mix. So see, this is another way that you can orient them. You have another question? Here's um, the blocks. Like if I, if I cut all the squares with the ruler, and I do it all, um, cut into them all pretty side facing up. You see how all the fractured pieces are just kind of going this direction where it peaks like that and they're identical. You could do the same thing in the opposite direction or you can mix the two like we were just doing earlier. Go ahead, what's the question? How do you manage the bias size? How do you manage the bias size? You don't move them, you don't distort them. If you watch the video tutorial, they're not proper bias sides, but they are cut at a slight angle so they do kind of have some stretch to them. Um, in the video tutorial for the fractured quilt block, I tell you where, like, to just put one pin and set it down. And what I do is I cut all the squares, I prep them all the same way, and that way you're handling the fabric and the patchwork pieces minimally. It's all one big stack that goes straight to the sewing machine, you just feed it through, you know, pull your pin out, feed it through, and leave it. And they're all chain pieced, so you're not really, like, yanking and pulling and pressing one at a time separately, you know? So I do them all, it's like assembly line style quilting and that's what makes these quilts with the 10 inch slicer come together so quickly. So just don't stretch. And the second seam that you sew, so after you combine the two smaller chunks and then you sew them both to this bigger one, this one ends up being bigger already than you start with, you know, than what you have here because you ate up some seam allowance on these two. So you have some wiggle room on top and bottom. So in the video tutorial, I tell you, how to do it so that you center it up, okay? And that way you just have a little bit that you need to trim off the ends to kind of clean it up in the end, which is great because that helps a lot with, if you started off with squares that weren't perfectly 10 inch by 10 inch, right? Like a lot of these pre-cut stacks are. Um, and then if your sewing is a little bit off, you know, it gives you a little wiggle room to just barely trim off anything and then make it all look perfect when they're trimmed to the nine and a half inch square size, okay? You have another question? No? Let's do a giveaway. I have to make more blocks, y'all, and then I'm going to meet y'all back here so we can talk a little bit more about what the final design layout is that I chose and what I'm going to do with this quilt. Because you can see that a lot of the blocks that I started cutting into have this aqua in them, but I still have more squares that were part of that stack that I still need to make into these fractured blocks. So 
I mean, I'm not limited here by just the ones that I've made so far. I just kind of wanted to touch base and share with you where I was in the progress and see if any others of you wanted to join in and give it a try. Question. Uh, no, but the giveaway. If oh, the giveaway. Uh, Sorry. No question. Just giveaways. Let's do it. We are with Sheila Lily. Sheila Lily. Okay. We're going to spin for you, girl. I need to really tighten this thing up. Let me spin in this so hard that it's like going to. Hold on. Stand still. All right. Let me hold it up the base. Sheila Lily, you are the winner of. A pack of white mesh fabric. Awesome. Sheila, go ahead and send us an email at bea at craftygemini.com. Let us know your name, for sure your mailing address, and tell us what you want. That way, whoever from my shipping team here is going to be doing uh, the mail outs, they'll know exactly what to grab you, even though they're not watching the live. <laughs> so just say, hey, Sheila, I want a pack of white mesh, and we will get that in the mail for you this week. All right? Awesome. Any last minute questions for me? I think I might have some time tonight to make some more blocks. What do you think? Can I quilt? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's still kind of early. Oh, oh, for this pinwheel look, um, they say it all looks like a pinwheel. Yeah. So, um, would you do all pretty sides up? Oh, so let's see how we did it. So these are all pretty side up, and you're just turning it, just like that. Okay, as long as you were consistent, right? You could do them all the other way. Also, let me. Isn't that cute? Let me change this one out so it shows up a little bit better on camera, like the boldness of the darks. How cute is ah, How cute is that? Yeah. Yeah, so they just have to all be done the same way, and then you just rotate them. Do, 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 do. Okay, and that one again would be super cool, very large scale, bold to do if you did all darks on the outside background pieces and lights in the middle or the opposite way or a combination of the two. If you did like neutral fabrics, blacks and whites, black and beige, gray and black, something like that and played around with the contrast, some dark in the center pinwheel and some light on the background and alternate them, I think that would look amazing. So it's cool because it's like for people that don't design quilts, this is like allowing you to design your own quilt, right? You're picking the fabric, oh, something in my eye, and then you get to just play around with it to come up with your own secondary, tertiary design layout, whatever you want to do based on the colors of the fabrics, the color value of it. And speaking of color value, I didn't even talk about the Ruby Ruler. So real quick, we're going to do one last giveaway, and I'm not even going to spin the wheel. You'll just give me a name, and we'll give away a Ruby Ruler, okay? So the Ruby Ruler... <clears throat> Is designed by Wisecraft, okay? This is a five inch ruler that has the lines and everything, but the way that it's used is to cancel out color when you're choosing fabrics and also when you're laying out blocks. So remember how we talked about picking our fabrics like one light and one dark as I put them together? So I'm gonna put this over the camera. And if you look over at the blocks, you see how no longer can you see the actual colors of the fabrics, but you can see the one on the top left the background is dark and the fractured chunk is light, okay? And the opposite goes for the next one. The background is light. The other piece, you know, the fractured chunk is dark. And so that's what it allows you to do so that you can sort your fabrics by color value, light, medium, dark, light, dark, whatever you want to do. And then it takes away the color part of it because I find a lot of times people are like, I'm not sure if these go together. If you get enough contrast, meaning instantly I can see this plays as the light, this plays as the dark, then you're gonna get that visual interest that you want from what I'm saying here, like lights and darks next to each other, okay? So the Ruby Ruler you can get from our online shop, craftygemini.com shop, and we're gonna put in the link right now in the chat box so you can check it out. We do have them on sale, I believe, and so I would definitely check that out. And you can see even all the quilts that are on the wall. Look at that black and white one. It just looks dark and light. Everything that's dark, it, you know, it, it cancels the color completely and just allows you to see dark and light. The same thing with my shirt, right? See the orange and the navy? Super, super cool. Okay? And this is the Jolie Raglan 3245, by the way. <laughs> 
I do have a video course on this and this is the sample that I made because I teach you all in the video course how to hack the neckline. The pattern, the way that it comes, it has like a lower, more open neckline and I know a lot of ladies didn't really like that or some people's bras were kind of showing if they made it in a bigger size and so I teach you how to hack the neckline to bring it in closer for this cute kind of jewel neckline, which I really, really love and it's made out of a cotton spandex. So that is a Jali 3245 Raglan t-shirt class that I teach online. And you can also sign up for that um, on my website, craftygemini.com. Uh, it's under like video, PDF and video workshops. And we're going to include the link right here in the chat box for you. So you can check that out too if you're interested. Rounded hem. Super cute. Super comfy. All right. Any other questions for me? I keep looking here like I have a watch. It's just a bracelet. Mm -hmm. Probably you say you're going to give away that. Uh, ruby the ruby ruler. ruler. Yeah. You ready to give me a name? Uh, yeah. Paradigm. Pat Paradigm. Congratulations. You have won a ruby ruler for your stash. Remember, you can use it like we said here for color value, canceling out color, so you can sort your fabrics and your scraps. If you're someone who holds on to every little bit of fabric and you like to work on scrappy quilts, little two and a half inch squares and you just have them in a stack, it's a great way to just chop up your stash and then sort it into, into piles, right? Light, medium, dark, light, medium, dark. This is a great tool to use. And then you can also use it to measure, to trim, and to cut out your own five inch square pre-cuts too. So again, we carry these in the online shop. We've included the link here for you. Our shop is craftygemini.com slash shop. Pat, go ahead and email us at bea at craftygemini.com. Give us your name, mailing address, and tell us that you won the Ruby Ruler on tonight's live chat, okay? All right, so we are gonna end it with that. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed chatting with me today. I'm kind of loving this new space. Let me know in the comments below what you think about my new sewing room, what kind of tutorials you want to see coming up, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. And Carl's asking if we are shipping. We are. We are still shipping. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Steph. Hope you're doing good, girl. Bye, Garnet. Good to see you on here. Bye, Margie. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to be like here saying hi to everybody. Hey, EJ. Hey, Dorothy. Awesome. Hi, Doreen. So many familiar names and thumbnails. <laughs> yep, thank you, Carla. Bye, Della. Bye, Prudence. Awesome. Have a good night, everybody.